Hello again, grammarians. Don't forget to hit those subscribe and like buttons after watching. Our video today will delve a bit more deeply into the words we consider coordinating conjunctions. You probably already know that there are seven coordinating conjunctions in English that are easily memorized by the acronym FANBOYS. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. The funny thing is that some of these words are also other parts of speech. In fact, you probably use some of them as parts of speech other than conjunctions far more than you use them as conjunctions. Let's take a look at two examples. The first example is for. It's almost assured that you never use the word for as a conjunction, if you're living in the 21st century anyway. Instead, you probably have only used it in your speech as a preposition. Let's look at the difference. When for is used as a preposition, it begins a prepositional phrase that takes an object, as in the following examples. Marcus baked a cake for his little brother's birthday. Or, for Christmas, Octavian got a new bike. The use of for as a preposition is almost the only normal use in English speaking cultures in the world today. However, if you peruse the 19th century British literature, perhaps, you'll see something that might seem a little strange. The use of for as a conjunction. When this happens, for means nearly the same as because or since. Let's see how this might look. Billy studied hard, for he had a geography test the following day. Notice that for here means the same as because, but unlike because or since, for is used with a comma. Why? The answer is simple. For is a coordinating conjunction, and because and since are subordinating conjunctions. Thus, the punctuation rules differ. If you're not sure about the punctuation rules governing coordinating and subordinating conjunctions, let us know in the comments so that we can make a special video for you. In the meantime, here's another example of for used as a conjunction. The flower began to wilt for the night was chilly. Again, it's easy to see that for here means the same as because. Remember, however, unlike because and since, the word for can never begin a sentence. If you're not sure why, check out the purpose of a coordinating conjunction. Now, let's look at another conjunction that you probably don't use as a conjunction much at all. The word yet. You are probably most familiar with the use of yet as an adverb, as in the following examples. Though the sky had clouded over, it hadn't yet begun to rain. Notice that the word yet modifies the verb had begun in this sentence, just as we might see in the phrases had now begun or had recently begun. Here, the adverbs yet, now, and recently tell when the action took place. Now, let's see yet as a conjunction, which is a bit more rare. Julius had gotten plenty of sleep last night, yet he was falling asleep at school the next morning. In this sentence, the conjunctive use of the word yet means the same as but or however. Let's see another. James doesn't have any COVID-19 symptoms, Yet, he was forced to self-isolate for 14 days. As you can see from the previous examples, coordinating conjunctions can be tricky. It's important to know the functions of all parts of speech and to understand how a word is being used in a sentence when trying to identify its part of speech. I hope this video was informative. Until next time. <laughs>